Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning on this Holy Trinity Sunday, the first Sunday after Pentecost. It's good to see you all here today. I don't think anyone's going to be taking advantage of sitting outside their cars today. It's a little misty, a little wet. Uh, but for those of you at home, that probably doesn't affect you. Welcome if you're watching on Facebook Live. You're over here today to get the camera out of the rain so you get to see. Honestly, I think this is my better side, but it's all okay. So you get to watch from over this angle. Uh, welcome at home, or if you're watching later on the recording, uh, that works too. Glad to have you. Uh, for all of you in your cars, you should have been given a bulletin by our friendly ushers. And for those of you at home, there is a digital copy of the bulletin on our website or in our uh, email that went out if you're on our mailing list. I have a few announcements to share with you today. Uh, first of all, I uh, wanted to um, lift up that we do need a little bit of help. If you've been inside the building, that means you've probably been helping with our cleanup and organizing projects. Thank you so much. It is amazing uh, the transformation that's been happening inside the building. Our to-do list has shrunk considerably. And uh, just a few things left. One of those things is in the sanctuary. Along the side and back walls are these cove lights, they're called. There's uh, like a little box, a little panel on it. Come on through. And uh, there's uh, lights up and in there. We need help not only replacing those light bulbs, but also figuring out how to clean those uh, translucent panels that go up there. Um, we're not sure the right approach to take. If you have any experience with that, or if you know somebody who does, uh, please let myself or Don Shaw know, and uh, that's one of the last things to do in the sanctuary. Um, as we've been cleaning, we've found a bunch of stuff that needs a new home. It's, it's still good, it's in working order, but we don't need it. It hasn't been used here in many years, it's just been gathering dust, so we thought, we're going to put it out for somebody else to have a chance to use it. So if after service you would like to take a look, in the fellowship hall we have a whole square full of tables uh, with all sorts of different items on there, uh, books and hymnals and office stuff, you name it, there's a bunch of stuff in there. Please take a moment to walk around in there and check that out, see if there's something you can take home or something that you think a friend could use. Um, related to that, uh, with the new CDC recommendations, the governor's office and state health department have put out that if you are vaccinated, look, no mask. Uh, so if you do go inside, please keep in mind though that if you are unvaccinated, to uh, still put a mask on, do all the distancing rules. Uh, and if you are vaccinated, but you still wanna wear a mask, that is fine, that is absolutely okay. Uh, it's gonna be a while to transition back to something new. And uh, so we're gonna be patient and loving with one another as we have been throughout all of this. Uh, just a few other announcements. The Community Garden at All Souls is looking for volunteers. That is up the road on Atley House. Uh, so if you have that gardening bug and can't get enough in your own yard, uh, please check that out in your bulletin. The 2021 Joan Barnes Memorial Scholarship is still out there until June 21st. That's the final deadline. So if you or somebody you know is looking for a scholarship, you can read about all the details of that. Uh, our midweek messages for June are coming up. Uh, we finished up our one chapter wonder study and for the month of June, we'll be sharing some Lutheran stories. I've got a, a couple of really nice books that came out over the last couple of years. One is called Introducing the Lutherans, and uh, sorry, Together by Grace, Introducing the Lutherans, and the other is Stories of Stories from Global Lutheranism, a Historical Timeline. And both of these have a lot of really short little stories and essays that talk about the Lutheran movement from its beginnings and the Reformation uh, throughout the centuries around the world and what might be coming ahead. So we'll be sharing a few of those stories over the next month. Those are the things I wanted to lift up today for announcements. Uh, we are going to begin our time of worship with welcome and, or excuse me, with confession and forgiveness. And uh, keep in mind, you'll be hearing a lot about the Trinity today. This is uh, kind of a one-off Sunday on the church calendar where we dig into what this whole Trinity thing means that is part of our Christian teaching and uh, how it applies to us today. As we begin, if you can, no one's outside. I got used to saying you can stand again, but I guess if you're home, you can stand up from your couch. You can do that. Uh, but as you're able, please stand or just follow along. We are gathered today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. 
Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our gathering song today is, Come Thou Almighty King. our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray together. Almighty Creator and ever-living God, we worship your glory, eternal three in one, and we praise your power, majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in this faith, defend us in all adversity and bring us at last into your presence, where you live in endless joy and love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The first lesson is from Isaiah, the sixth chapter, verses one through eight. This reading narrates Isaiah's vision of the Lord surrounded by angels. They sing, Holy, 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 a song the church sings at the beginning of the great thanksgiving. This liturgical text invites the church and all creation to sing in praise of God's glory. That glory is God's mercy towards sinners. A reading from Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces. 
and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord say, Who shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. The word of the Lord. The second lesson is from Romans, the 8th chapter, uh, verses 12 through 17. In describing the new life of faith, Paul refers to all three persons of the Trinity. The Spirit leads us to recognize that we are, are children of God, the Father, and joint heirs with Christ, the Son. A reading from Romans. Brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading today comes from St. John, the third chapter. Jesus' miracles prompt Nicodemus to visit him in secrecy. Jesus tells him about being born of the Spirit and about the Son who has been sent by God to save him. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. <clears throat> now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I say to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it. But you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen. Yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. 
Uh, for a children's sermon today, I'm assuming there's at least some of you in the cars. I always have a glare. I can't actually tell. But I know that there are kids in cars, at homes, watching, or that you can go back and tell them stuff. So I'll, I'll keep it short, but here's what I wanted to hold up today. I've got a couple of erasers. I've got the kind that's on the end of a pencil and just the kind that you hold. If it's a really big mistake and this isn't going to cut it, you grab one of these guys. Usually they're pink. For some reason, I have a purple one. You just erase it all out to start again. Uh, in our reading from Isaiah, Isaiah is having this dream, this, this vision, that he's in God's throne room and, and he can, he's in the temple and there's these interesting six-winged angel things called seraphs and they're talking to him and he's very overwhelmed by all of this. And uh, he says, you know what, I, this is all too much for me. I'm, I'm just a normal guy. In fact, I make mistakes all the time. I'm, I'm sinful. I'm unclean is the word he uses. He said, I, I shouldn't be here. I, I shouldn't be seeing this vision. I shouldn't be seeing the Lord and these, these seraphs. This is too much for me. And then one of the seraphs flies up. Remember, this is a dream. And he takes a coal, like a hot, char hot charcoal out of the grill, takes it from the altar, the pair of tongs, and he touches it to Isaiah's lips. If you do that in, really life, in real life, that would burn. Don't do that. But in the dream, what, it was symbolic, and it meant like burning away all the bad stuff. Uh, cleansing, cleaning Isaiah. And the seraph says in our reading, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt is departed. Your sin is blotted out. Blotted out, that's kind of like another way of saying it's been erased. God sees our sin. God sees our mistakes. God sees you know, maybe how we don't feel like we're good enough sometimes. And God takes all of that, the guilt we feel about when we do something bad, and just erases it. He says, I'm going to use you. I'm going to work through you. I'm going to spread my love through you. I'm going to erase all that stuff. And we're going to start again. And the voice of the Lord says, after the coal does its erasing job, the Lord's voice says, Who shall I send? Who will go for us? Who's going to do my work? And Isaiah says, Here am I, send me. So when Jesus died on the cross, was raised, that erased our sins. And in baptism, that erasure it's for your whole life. I mean, yes, we'll still make mistakes, but we keep coming back. We keep saying we're sorry. We keep confessing our sins. And that eraser is always there. And we keep getting fresh starts. So instead of saying, I don't know if I'm up for this. Instead, because of God cleaning that off. Instead, we say, here am I. Send me. There might not be things we understand. We might sometimes think, this is all too much for us. But God's going to keep coming back with those holy erasers and saying, fresh start, blank slate, I want you to go do this. And then we are free to say, okay, here I am, send me. So God is a God of erasers. God is a God of fresh starts and clean slates. And even if we don't feel like we can do it, God's gonna get us there until we're ready to raise our hand and say, yep, I'm good, send me. I don't know about all of you, but I enjoy, I love a good mystery. Uh, as a kid, I ended up watching a lot of detective shows. My mom liked the mysteries and the detective shows too. Uh, so I ended up watching a lot of Murder, She Wrote. Why anybody stayed in Cabot Cove, I do not know. Uh, it was a bad place to live. People kept, bad things kept happening to a lot of people. Uh, Magnum P.I., Columbo, In the Heat of the Night, the list goes on and on. I watched all these shows. I read The Hardy Boys and Nancy Drew. I read Sherlock Holmes stories and Agatha Christie novels. Uh, Miss Marple's fine, I'm an Hercule Poirot guy myself. I watched the film versions, the TV versions of a lot of these. I even enjoyed watching Busy Town Mysteries based on Richard Scarry uh, when my kids watched that cartoon when they were younger. Uh, still fun. Uh, I still have a board game called Crack the Case I got when I was around I don't know, 14 or so. It's got these cards with these little mysteries on them. They don't give you many details, and you have to ask questions till you figure it out. They're really hard, but it's a lot of fun. Um, I still enjoy a good mystery, whether it's a book, movie, TV show. doesn't really matter. I, I still enjoy following the detectives as they sort through the clues, as they 
eliminate the dead ends, track down the culprits, and of course there's the big reveal at the end. And it's really fun. When you figured out the mystery, when you figured it out on your own before they make the reveal, and you could be like, aha, I was smarter than that fake detective, I figured it out. Well, that's one kind of mystery. That's the puzzle kind, the detectives and clues kind. The kind that gets solved, the kind that has an answer. Even if you can't figure it out right away, you know there's an answer there. There's another kind of mystery. One that, by definition, is unknowable, unsolvable. Mystery in the sense that it's beyond us, bigger than us, inherently, beyond our understanding. We will not solve it. We will not figure it out. And yet, at the same time, this kind of mystery that we know we can't solve draws us in. We, we can't help it. It makes us wonder. It makes us want to explore it makes us want to try to understand it, even if that exploration is limited. It's limited to just kind of simply dabbling around the visible edges, knowing we never get the full picture. It's kind of like the Lord in Isaiah's vision. The hem of his robe filled the whole temple. But it's only that edge that we can perceive. We do our best to describe and define these kind of mysteries. But our words, our understanding, will always come up short. On some level, God will always be a mystery. Now, on the one hand, God reveals God's self to us through the Word made flesh, Jesus, through the scriptures, through dreams and visions, through apostles and evangelists, through martyrs and mystics, through the work of the Holy Spirit that, that manifests from time to time through tangible elements like in the sacraments, the water, the bread, the wine, and through the, the mutual consolation of our flesh and blood brothers and sisters who respond to God's love and presence in their lives and pass it on to us and we do the same for them. So we, we do get to understand some of God because God reveals these things to us. But on the other hand, God will always be God transcendent, unknowable, other. As Paul says in 1 Corinthians, for now we see in a mirror dimly. Only after our own resurrection will we see clearly and we will know God as we have been fully known. We're not there yet. Trinity is a word that never appears in the Bible. Nowhere. But it is the word that the early Christians used to describe what we could perceive of the essence and the nature of God as revealed in part through the scriptures and through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. And John's Gospel talks about the word made flesh. Jesus promises the Holy Spirit, the same spirit that, that moved over the waters at creation. God the Father created all that there is, heaven and earth, galactic and subatomic, physical and metaphysical and everything else. So we have this enough of a revelation from God that we can come up with things like Trinity to describe even the parts we don't know. And Trinity is the word that testifies to the truth of God that God's people have experienced. One God and three persons. Eternal relationship that desires us to be in loving relationship with one another and with the whole of creation. Math that is beyond us, divine math of one and three and three and one, that makes no sense, but yet it does. We are created in the image of this Trinitarian God, and so therefore we are created to live in relationship as well, seeking unity in the midst of diversity. Trinity is one of the most central of Christian doctrines and teachings. It is also one of the doctrines that is the hardest to explain and describe because it is steeped in the mystery of God. It is one of the teachings that has probably inspired the most heresies and the most hypotheses. And so each year on this Holy Trinity Sunday, we, we lift up the teaching and the presence of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, the Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer. And we do our best to embrace the mystery, 
and dabble and explore in the hem of God's robe that we can touch and perceive, the revelations of God that we can engage with. Why? So what? Do How many of you spend time pondering the mystery and the teaching of the Trinity? Why do we bring this up once a year? Isn't this just for academics and ivory towers? What does this have to do with those of us who are not professional theologians? How does the doctrine of the Trinity play a role in your daily faith? Why get all abstract when... We have so many other things that teach us very clearly about God's love, God's will, and our identity as Christians. We have the Ten Commandments, the Creeds, the Apostles' Creed, uh, the Nicene Creed. We have the Lord's Prayer. We have the sacraments that we can touch and feel and taste. We have the Golden Rule. We have the commandment from Jesus to love one another the way Jesus loves us, to and through the cross. We have the Patriarchs and Matriarchs of Israel. We have the Prophets. We have the Gospels, we have Paul's letters, and more in the New Testament. We have all the teachings and stories of the heroes of the faith, our ancestors in the faith, flesh and blood. So why do any of us here in this parking lot or watching from home, why do we try to wrestle with the mystery of God, the concept of the Trinity? Why does it matter? Why do we have this Sunday on our camp? Well, to answer that question, at least try to. I'm going to borrow some terms from the other kind of mystery, the, the kind of mystery I'm a little more familiar with. I'm going to talk to you about motive, means, and opportunity. First up is motive. In our Gospel lesson today, we have the Pharisee Nicodemus coming to Jesus for answers. And Jesus tells him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above, or, as other translations put it, born anew. Our motive for asking questions about God, for exploring mysteries that are beyond us, for fleshing out our understanding of the Trinity and coming up with that in the first place, is actually quite straightforward. We want to see the kingdom of God. We, like Nicodemus, want answers, even if we know we can't completely grasp them. We still want to know. We want to be touched by God like Isaiah was in his vision. We want to see God, and then we want to be able to see from God's perspective. We want to be closer to God and God's ways. Even in our limitations, we want to understand God and God's purpose in our lives. We want to be oriented by God. We want to be born anew, born from above, from God, the better to experience God's love more fully and share God's love more freely. If Trinity is the revelation of the Holy Spirit to us to put words to that and understand this God of relationship and why we are wired the way we are, why we desire relationship, why we want to love others and be loved, then that's why we do this. We want to know, we want to see it from God's perspective. That's why we join the dance of the Trinity, even if we don't know the steps. That's your motive. That's why. Second is means. So yeah, we get that idea of why we want to engage with this Trinity idea. But now the question is how? How do we wade into mystery? What are the means by which we do this? We get some help with that, because we can't do it on our own. And Jesus says to Nicodemus, the wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who was born of the Spirit. Spirit and wind come from the same word in Greek. It's plan. The Holy Spirit stirs things up within us and around us so that we may experience God's love and so that we may share God's love. We are called to pay attention and be ready. The Spirit's going to get us there, but we've got to be ready. It's kind of crazy. But the means by which we learn more about the mystery of the Trinity is by getting more concrete. We understand the abstract by getting more concrete. We hear these famous verses again today. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, 
but in order that the world might be saved through him. We hear these verses, and then we respond to them in concrete actions with our flesh and blood, by sharing these verses with others, and by seeing others as the very ones that God sent the Son for, other sinners who need saving, who are not under God's salvation, but who are under God's, I wrote that wrong, who are not under God's condemnation, but who are under God's salvation and love. We understand Trinity by seeing others the way God sees them in the flesh and blood as sinners that God wanted to save through Jesus. It's motive, it's means, third is opportunity. So we have the why, we have the how, now it's the when and the where. So when we do see these other people in the flesh that God sent Jesus to save, we think of what Paul said in our Romans reading today. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. We have truly endless opportunity to be led by the Spirit of God and to live as children of God. The Spirit never stops leading and the world never stops leading. God washes away our sins and places that symbolic coal to our lips, that eraser, so that we can readily say, here I am, send me. Trinity is the best way we Christians have to talk about the who of God. And like any good mystery of either type, we are inspired to ask even more questions, good questions, healthy questions, questions that lead to exploration and discovery and discernment and growth and even more questions. That's why we have this Trinity. That's why we like this kind of unsolvable mystery because it helps us ask questions. It helps us learn and grow. Why and how and when and where and then some. And here is my question for all of us today. In our loving, in our sharing, our worship and our witness, are we drawing people in? Do they see something almost mysterious and inexplicable in the grace we have received and in the grace that we extend and exhibit? Do they want more? Do they leave an encounter with us Christians, us Messiah Lutheran Church members, wanting more? With good questions saying, well, tell me more about this God. I want to explore more of this. Are we inviting our community, families, to join us in the mystery, to discover and discern alongside us? When people encounter us, do they encounter the Trinity? That is, do they experience community? Unity and diversity. Woven relationships. Just like the Trinitarian God in whose image we are created. Or, do they experience a closed community? With incomprehensible God talk. Insider language. No room for exploration. No encouragement to ask questions. By the grace of God, it is not up to us. Not only up to us. The Trinity is eternal love and relationship. And in our creation and our redemption and the Holy Spirit's ceaseless stirring, that eternal love and relationship is imprinted on us, sealed into us through the waters of baptism. And it's available to us. The Spirit helps us. All of this mystery, at least as much as we can grasp onto, is in us. It's not from us, but it's in us. We tap into it, we share it with help from the Spirit. The mystery of God and God's love is bigger than any one of us, bigger than any church, bigger than any denomination. We can't solve it. But we do have the motive and the means and the opportunity to embrace it. Thanks be to God. The hymn of the day is Come Join the Dance of Trinity.
For this Holy Trinity Sunday, we confess our faith with the slightly fuller words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. We pray, O oh God, for your holy church around the world. Revitalize and renew us, that we may be reborn, reborn once again through the, the waters of baptism and the glowing wind of your spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for your holy church around the world. Revitalize and renew us, that we may be reborn once again through the waters of baptism and the blowing wind of your spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for your holy church around the world. Revitalize and renew us, that we may be reborn once again through the waters of baptism and the blowing wind of your spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for your holy church around the world. Revitalize and renew us, that we may be reborn once again through the waters of baptism and the blowing wind of your spirit, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for your holy church around the world, revitalize and renew us, that we may be reborn once again through the waters of baptism and the blowing wind of your spirit. Lord, in your mercy, in our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for your holy church around the world. Revitalize and renew us that we may be reborn once again through the waters of baptism and the blowing wind of your spirit. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. God, you are life. We pray for our world, our country, our community, and our church as we face the challenges of the coronavirus. We pray for those who grieve for the sick and their families, for the anxious, comfort them. We pray for each other, Debbie, Annette, Bruce, Johnny, Leroy, Adam, 
Bonnie, Ted, Steve and Sue, Karen, Doc, Matt, Ruth, and Judy. We pray for our extended family and neighbors, the Allens, Mary Jo, Kathy, Dwayne, Robin, Penny, and family and friends of Dave, Linda, Julie, Michael, Bob and Mary, Lori, Christina, Pat, Roger, Ken and Dee, Tim, Karen, our veterans and our fellow soldiers and our waiting families, all law enforcement, firefighters, and first responders, the people and pastor, Reverend Catherine of All Souls Episcopal in our shared ministry, hospitals, nursing homes, and other health care facilities, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the World Health Organization, medical researchers and scientists, schools, workplaces, government institutions, and municipal agencies. Those afflicted by natural, nat natural disasters and all those affected by the recent acts of violence, both at home and abroad, especially in Israel and Palestine situation for all who travel. We pray for those who grieve, for the sick and their families, and for the anxious. Comfort them. We pray for those who have lost businesses and jobs. Restore them. We pray for those working and staying at home, and for those who remain isolated. Sustain them and protect them. We pray for all hospital and health care workers and all first responders, provide for them and protect them. We pray for those who are making decisions about how to live into the future and when that will happen. Guide them. We pray with thanksgiving for vaccines and treatments and for those who develop them, test them, and administer them. Encourage them. Keep us all in your care as we continue to love our neighbors near and far. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all families, you have given us families to be sanctuaries of blessing, comfort, and love for each other. Under your protection, fill us with harmony, hope, and help. We pray this week for the Ewing and Ford families, as well as our Messiah family. Guard all of our hearts that we may display love instead of hate, anger, and bitterness. Lead us to be all to be grateful for your abiding love and enable us to glorify you by sharing that love with others. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O oh God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. Before we share the peace, I do want to acknowledge that none of us caught the glitch in the prayers when we downloaded them and copied them over, and I want to thank Diane for just sticking to it. And even though it was the same petition a bunch of times in a row, that's okay. We're asking for the Holy Spirit to intervene, and that kind of covers everything. So thank you, Diane. I'm sorry we missed that. That's kind of funny. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share that peace. <laughs>
That's why people really sign up to be ushers, so they can just take all of that in. Uh, thank you for your offerings. If you've given online, give the ushers a thumbs up. And if you're watching online, you have a variety of ways to share your offerings with us and to support other uh, people and causes that are doing good work in the world. Thank you. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we have received here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is we right to give God, God thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God. You reveal your glory as the glory of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, equal in majesty undivided in splendor, one Lord, one God, ever to be adored in your eternal glory. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, you alone are holy, you alone are God. The universe declares your praise beyond the stars, beneath the sea, within each cell, with every breath. We praise you, O God. Generations bless your faithfulness through the water, by night and day, across the wilderness, out of exile, into the future. We bless you, O oh God. We give you thanks for your dear Son at the heart of human life, near to those who suffer, beside the sinner, among the poor, with us now. We thank you, O oh God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
Again, after supper, he took the cup, and gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his love for us on the way, at the table, and to the end, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. We pray for the gift of your spirit in our gathering, within this meal, among your people, throughout the world. Blessing, praise, and thanks to you, holy God, through Jesus Christ, by your spirit, in your church, without end. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Thanks be to God. Just as an FYI, uh, last week we were reminded that there are some folks who have uh, different conditions, allergies, where gluten is not their friend. So we do have gluten-free wafers for the communion. We made some separate servings kits just for those. If that is something that would be helpful to you, just let us know as we bring the communion out.
Body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ that you have received, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, the bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us with this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Before I share the blessing, it is Memorial Day tomorrow, and I would like to share a prayer uh, in honor of those who have served and given their lives. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give thanks for all those who have shown the greatest love by laying down their lives for others. We especially thank you for those in our military throughout history who have sacrificed their lives for their fellow citizens and for us who came after. As we remember their service, keep us mindful of all those for whom this day is a burden and send your spirit to comfort them. Be present with all the women and men who are serving in the military today. Let them live for the peace known only from you. Help us to be worthy of their legacy and keep us mindful of their service, that in all things we may live our lives in praise and thanksgiving to you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. For this Holy Trinity Sunday, we have a three-part blessing. Please receive it and join in. The God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. Amen. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen. Our sending song is Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty.
Thanks be to God.